The SoundCloud era of rap is looked at as one of the most controversial eras in hip hop history. Sure, that time produced some of the biggest legendary artists of the current day, such as Lil Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, XXXTentacion, and Juice World, just to name a few, but not everyone was as fortunate enough as them to maintain a stable fan base that would carry over and listen to their music for years to come. My name is Grisha, and today we take a look at some of the fallen off artists of the SoundCloud era, where we document how they gained some traction, what caused their downfall and what they're doing today in order to continue to make a living. So today's video has a criteria that each artist must fall under. Number one, they must have either one or more songs with over 10 million views slash listens. Number two, they must have fallen off to a point where most people watching this video probably haven't even thought about them in some time. And number three, there must be a distinct reason as to why they fell off to the point that they did. So let's get started. The first person in this video is someone who I personally haven't heard of in what seems like years, and that is Kid Boo. If you don't know who Kid Boo is, he's essentially someone who tried to use the SoundCloud rapper Essentials blueprint to rise to fame, and while it did work for some time, he's just a prime example that having the look is not enough to have a sustainable career in the music industry. It seemed at first though that while Kid Boo didn't have the most musical talent, one thing he had going for him was that he seemed to have the marketing knocked down pretty good. Throughout his entire run, he stuck with the narrative that he's a SoundCloud rapper clone that was created in a lab. My first gen was born in Jersey. However, I was cloned by Clonade in Canada. My model number is 0112568 if anyone wants to see the registration and cloning. And even made some videos in which you could quite literally see two Kid Boos, presumably the original and the clone, being seen together in the same room. As for the music, you may ask, eh, it seemed like Kid Boo wanted to apply the whole clone thing to the different music he would create as well, as he quite literally copied the styles of, of other popular artists out at the time. The biggest one being the song Dead Roses. Ain't no heart up on my shoulder, ooh, dead that whole life roses, ooh which was just a blatant ripoff of Nav and Lil Uzi's Wanted You. All this ice, I need a freezer, mm, whip it up, back beater. Mm. And even his biggest song to date, Death to SoundCloud, which is sitting at 12 million views on YouTube, had clear influences from artists like X and Ski Mask at the time when it came to the cadence and ad-libs. Although I'm not gonna lie, that song did go crazy back at parties in high school. But it seems like all of Kid Boo's biggest songs came from around four to five years ago at this point, and many haven't even heard of him since then. So that leaves the question, what happened? Well, first of all, the obvious part is that you can only get so far by copying and biting other artists' styles. Like, yes, we get it, your whole persona is being a clone, but while it was a decent marketing ploy at the time, it got old pretty quick and wasn't going to be a long-term excuse for Kid Boo to copy other artists. That mixed in with the fact that fans and even other artists already didn't like Kid Boo from the get-go due to either the copying or allegations he had of child abuse, among other things, such as his ex-girlfriend making an hour-long video exposing him for the things he had done to her. In fact, other big artists, such as Lil Uzi and Trippy Red, have called Kid Boo out on social media for both, mostly for copying their music and claiming that he did it first. I try so hard to find I try, yeah, yeah. I try. Hey look, dude told me I stole, I try. Nigga, your ass is trash, boy. Your ass is garbage. Now what happened was, see, my beat was made in 2018. Like the nigga wanted to be on the song, but I kicked him off the song because he was so damn trash. He said, I try my heart to be the answer i said what the f is this shit so i'm like man this shit's so trash i had to update the beat and shit and make it sound better and all that and put it on the album you know what i'm saying but i did i tried you know what i'm saying i made a real song yeah hey nine, 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 hey tell tell kid who suck my you know he know where i'm at man i stay in la man you know where i'm at since his peak in 2018, Kid Boo has only gotten one song to surpass a million streams, and that doesn't really count either because that was the song that he stole from Trippy Red. Other than that, it seems like every single year his streams have been declining more and more. So then, what does Kid Boo do now in 2023, you may ask? Well, he actually continues to drop music, but it's clear that he's way past his so called prime, with his only single of 2023 having only 34,000 plays on Spotify, which is actually a funny number since that's that's roughly the amount of monthly listeners that he has left on Spotify. He has also confirmed that he is indeed not a clone and that that was all just a marketing scheme in a video uploaded to his channel two months ago. Previous interviews y'all seen before, from then on I said like, oh, I was cloned and whoop-de-woo and all that stuff. Um, 
just being smart with marketing, you know? But no, <laughs> if you guys really wanna know, I know this will probably be like the most <gasps> moment, but nah, I'm, I've never been cloned. I'm a human being just like you, regular person. Shocker. However, despite this, he still seems to be copying rappers regardless of that fact, as he's moved on to copying the cadence of a new popular rapper, Yeet, with the song No Feels recently. I really would make it this shit like a prophecy. Fuck every nigga back then who doubted me. I'm out here trying to make my mama proud of me. Okay. Also, it seems like since the music checks dried up due to the fall off in popularity, Kid Buu has also started a second gig as an OnlyFans star. And while no, I did not do my proper research on the content that's there, maybe, just maybe, he copies those types of creators as well. Speaking of music checks drying up, however, that brings us to the second person in this video. Once again, this might be a person whose name you haven't heard of in a while, if ever, but if you were tapped into the industry plant video trend back in 2019, I'm sure the name Jumex would ring a bell. If not, here's a quick overview. One day in early 2019, it seemed like everyone who listens or watches music videos of hip hop got the song Trapped by Jumex recommended to them on their homepage. Believe it or not, despite the insane production quality of the video, mixing, and even being directed by a former Golf Wang member, Taco, this was Jumex's first song ever. Instantly, everyone who knew better realized that this didn't add up, and the YouTuber progress actually actually dug deeper and proved that Jumex was indeed an industry plant that was essentially trying to ride the wave of scream slash sad rap that was taking over the hip hop music genre at the time. How Jumex got industry planted. Essentially, a tapped in person in the music industry with big pockets came across an old video of Jumex smoking weed in class while yelling world star. So flashing the free falling object is given by the- World star, let's go! Mark. Saw he made music and decided that he's seen enough to know that he had a future megastar on his hands. They clearly wiped and reset his online image and started putting out well-produced music videos that had a decent budget and even promoting Jumex to audiences at festivals. Trapped, which is currently sitting at nearly 10 million views on YouTube, was followed up by Loner, which was another quote-unquote hit that has 11 million views at the time of this recording. Personally, industry plant or not, I gave the music a chance regardless, and while I can certainly say that I hated Trapped, Loner was actually a song I added to my playlist at the time. However, those two singles would be Jumex's peak as he's yet to get anywhere near the numbers of those two songs and his debut album would flop only months later and his EP at the end of 2019 performing even worse. It seemed like Jumex was just a failed investment on the label's end that didn't produce the success that they hoped he would. As for why that is, I just recommend you take a close listen to some of the songs that were made during this time getting the label backing. The lyrics had close to no substance and his entire image of of this internet sad boy musician came across more force than anything else. I wouldn't even blame his falling off to the heavy industry plant accusations because an artist like Ian Dior faced the same thing essentially early on in his career, but due to his talent and the ability to make a decent song, he's actually had a quite decent career and even a number one song, Mood, with 24K Golden. It just seemed like Jumex wasn't ready for the music industry at all, regardless of how hard they were trying to push him. They gave him a Travis Barker collab, as well as a Lil Xan collab, who although at the time was kind of already on his way out of the industry in terms of popularity, but nothing stuck and eventually it seemed like the label had taken their L and shelved him. But the question still remains, what's Jumex doing now? Well, like Kid Boo, it seems like he's still making music, although I'd imagine he got out of his label contract and is now fully independent. And you know what? While it's honestly not my style, I'd say his new music isn't even that bad. I could definitely see how some people might even enjoy it, honestly. But of course, without that label marketing, it's no surprise that he's currently struggling to get over 50,000 streams on his most recent releases. I do gotta give him credit though, it seems like he's trying to market the songs himself via TikToks, and he even made one TikTok finally admitting himself that he was in fact an industry plant. Industry plant pulls up to the studio. Do you need anything, bro? But regardless, the wave has passed, the sound, the industry, and the audience have all moved on, and I personally don't have the best feeling about Jumex's career trajectory moving forward. Speaking of Jumex, remember that guy that he collaborated with, Lil Xan? Well, it certainly wouldn't be a video covering SoundCloud rappers that fell off without mentioning him. By the way, spoiler alert, Lil Xan is by far the most successful person on this list, and I use that word success loosely there. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video has heard of Lil Xan, but if you haven't, he was essentially an artist that generally 
generated buzz almost instantly with his song Betrayed being uploaded to the Lyrical Lemonade YouTube channel. I'd say a few factors came into play in getting Lil Xan that initial hype buzz. This was late 2017, which was really when the emotional slash sad hip hop genre started taking off with artists like Lil Peep, X, Juice World, all growing in massive popularity. Lil Uzi was at an all time high in his career at that point with his single Exo Tour Life and his album Love Is Rage 2. And Lil Xan's Betrayed was just another song that fit that style of sad rap. And I'd be lying if I told you that I hated it at the time. I actually messed with this song a lot. Plus the fact that a rapper had the name Lil Xan was wild and added a shock factor that essentially forced people to click on his music and see what he was all about. Keep in mind, this was 2017 when Zans were in the media a lot as well. Lil Xan would go on to have an extremely brief but somewhat successful career as he had a few songs pop off with some insane numbers, had a famous relationship with Miley Cyrus's sister Noah Cyrus, and treats me like a princess, and when I'm hungry, he gets me chicken nuggets, and even went on tour with Nicki Minaj and Juice World. However, Lil Xan's downfall was so big that it could have its own video, and plenty of creators here on YouTube have already done that if you'd like a deep dive, but essentially, Lil Xan just wasn't talented, which was first seen when his debut album Total Xanarchy flopped and was pretty garbage. That mixed in with his label slash management drama and drug addiction definitely contributed to his inevitable downfall. I also think that people saw through the hype pretty quickly as Lil Xan became a meme almost as fast as he blew up. He continues to release music still, but way less than he did in the past with him releasing less and less songs every single year. However, I do think that because of how big he initially blew up, he will continue to get at least some streams and social media interactions moving forward. He's currently sitting at over 2.8 million monthly listeners still, although those seem to be coming from songs that he released over five years ago at this point, with him not having any real hit songs since all the way back in 2018. And speaking of 2018, which kind of seems to be the last time many of these artists were relevant at all, but that brings us to the final artist of this video, Icy Narco, or as I like to call him, Lil Pump version 34 Blue Edition. No, but for real, Icy Narco was essentially that, a Lil Pump clone with blue hair, just less viral. I first found out about Icy Narco from his music video on No Jumper for the song hashtag Ronnie J I killed this, but essentially he was just another South Florida mumble rap artist that made mediocre music that wasn't sustainable for a long career in the music industry. He did have some buzz with songs like Link getting over 10 million views on World Star, but this was just another case of we've seen this before. He was signed to 10K Projects, which is a label that has worked with artists such as Trippy Red, 6 9 Ian Dior, and more, but was very clearly dropped sometime after his album Winner Can Be Murder failed to perform in any successful way at all. Although he was an XXL freshman nominee in which he had this legendary quote. I'm Icy Narco and I deserve to be the XXL freshman because I taught Spongebob how to play the clarinet. But as for what he's doing now, that's kind of a difficult question to answer. I wouldn't say that he continues to make music since he only released one single in 2022, and that was in the first quarter of that year. He also hasn't posted on Instagram since September of 2021, and it seems like Icy Narco just disappeared or hibernated? I don't know, but either way, I hope he's okay and healthy. Maybe he's just taking a complete break from social media, but as far as I can see, I could not find anything about this dude in 2023. One thing that continues to be clear about about every artist mentioned in today's video is that at the end of the day, not everyone is ready and talented enough to have a long successful career in the music industry. You might have one or a couple of songs pop off, but regardless of your size at the time, if the talent and drive isn't there to back it up, the fall off will be inevitable. But that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know if I unlocked some hidden memories of these artists in the comment section down below. And if this video does well, I might just do a part two. So comment some names that I should use in the next one. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next one and thank you guys so much for watching.